Welcome back to the Try You channel, where we don't give a hyenas pussy what you had for dinner. I'm Rob. I'm Neil. And uh, we're gonna, well, like and subscribe. Make the camera person happy. <laughs> um, we're gonna talk today about uh, my top 10 stoner album list. I should say, it's not, I don't think these are necessarily stoner albums. They're just albums I would like to listen to if I was high, uh, and, and for, for many reasons. Um, I didn't put any on, the, on my original top 10 list. At number 10, I had Absolutely Free by The Mothers. If you ever listen to that album, you can imagine why. So uh, today we'll talk about number nine. It's Africa Brass by the John Coltrane. This is his traditional quartet, um, but he added some horns and brass. It's a nice orange vinyl. You can see the notes. And for this one, I'm going to start, I'm going to read all these liner notes, <laughs> and then I'm going to read the first uh, 200 pages of War and Peace for nice. this video. Now, what, what we'll uh, say is, uh, I took some notes while I was listening, and if you want to see, oh, I don't know if I have to read them, but I'm sure you guys can read that. Um, it's very Andy Kaufman of you, just now. To take notes? No, to want to read the entire... Oh, yeah, I'm sure. But I'm, I'm glad you told the whole audience where I got that idea. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's, it's an obvious Andy Kaufman Nothing's ripoff. Nothing's new under the sun, though. Okay. <laughs> but, um, okay, I'll, I'll start. You know, I, 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 it begins with that rhythm, just this, this great rhythm, almost like, and I, I love Supremes on my original top ten list, or this, this would probably be the album I was talking about. I listen to Love Supremes so many times in, in, in many states, and it's great every time. But it just starts out with this kind of simple rhythm, and this album is anything but simple, I think. And um, it's just, and then and then you get that simple rhythm, and, and you kind of get drawn in, and then there's this mind-bending saxophone that just comes in and blows you away. The only thing I've, I, and I always say I liken it to like hearing Hendrix wail, and then he just takes you. Then Coltrane, if you if you you get absorbed, and then he just takes you on um, a, a ride, um, uh, you know, with just. Uh, notes coming out and out and there's, and there's a bunch of climaxes it seems like throughout the song it'll bring you up and it'll put you down um are those uh the mind-bending saxophone um parts you're talking about are those almost like animalistic uh like i thought you know i was all in a zone where i'm maybe walk chilling walking through the forest and then you just real sharp uh, that's the horn. I, I think you're talking about the brass section. Dun, well, I, I don't want to do that for the thing, but it's, it's, it, I mean, it's like hundreds of notes. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's just, um, they, they, they've described the sound as sheets of sound before. I think it's pretty accurate, but I mean, it's just like, I mean, just note after note after note. And, uh, uh, that's going to be terrible for the video, but, um, to describe right. music is, is pretty hard, especially something like him. It's, uh, you, you have to watch it, go to try um, post it. I have this on my recommended because that's what I use. I mean, this is so good. It, it, it's top 10 worthy for me. A lot of Coltrane are. He's changed the way I've looked at music recently and, and actually got me started uh, wanting to get back into the drums and playing a little guitar and, and, and buying some equipment, just, just listening to him. I mean, of course, I don't expect to ever, ever produce anything like he puts out. But, uh, I mean, the first song on there, then the drums, Elvin Jones, I mean, let me, I gotta, I gotta make sure that's his name. I always forget uh, these guys' names. So I've just gotten into this. Yeah, it's Elvin Jones, and he's a great, great drummer. And it just kind of holds holds it together. It's kind of a, an anchor for the whole thing. And it, and it but it, it's unique and it's never boring. And um, it's just, oh, it's his drumming is just so powerful. And, but it's not overbearing it, and it's only adding to the song. I found it to be very soothing, the drumming, the yeah, percussion, yeah, that, that, yeah. and the first song especially. Yeah, it's a very percussive song, especially the first song's of the title track. And yeah, and this and this album, he introduced horns, and it reminded me when I first heard it of, of like James Brown's soul stuff, when they let the horn, horns kind of rang out and, and bring it back in. But it's just such a great, I mean, that's, uh, that's all I can keep saying, the drum solo though, it's never boring. Most drum solos, you can just drift away. This I, one just keeps you... I Focus. thought the piano was uh, really cool, and uh, then when it switched to the drum solo, I was really blown away by that. And it, it was just a really calming experience, uh, kind of zoned out on it. This one, I think, for me, it's intense. And then, you know, the drum solo is pretty intense, and then it, it kind of levels out, and then Coltrane just comes, just bombarding back in, and there's a climax, I think, maybe, maybe the climax of the whole album. But if you've never if you've never heard this album, I suggest going and, and listening to the first track, and and um, listening to it at least one time. You should be hooked if if you're any kind of fan of jazz. 
or any kind of fan of Coltrane. The next uh, song was one you, you said, and it's called Greensleeve, and it's traditional. And this one's just a beautiful melodic line. Mm -hmm. And um, it's what you kind of, more like what you think jazz is supposed to sound like, um, in, in my mind anyways. I'm not that big into jazz. But the line is just, uh, the be there's beautiful lines, and it take you, um, when I was listening, it kind of took me back to old black and white movies even. But it, 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 it has a tinge of that, but it's way it's way out there. You know, it wouldn't probably fit in an old traditional film because it's it's way more experimental. But he he's doing experimental and at the same time, I think, holding down the traditional type melodies and and the beauty that uh, that that can be in jazz music. Um, it's just uh, and then the piano and um, the piano and the bass in that one mm -hmm. I remember really was really um, melodic and and, and and soothing. I think. But then Coltrane comes in, and there's no doubt he's the alpha dog in this thing. It's just yeah. here, it's a whole no, another level. And I, I don't want to talk way too much about it. Go listen to this album. The next track, it just blow, I think, explodes more with what just Coltrane just shooting notes out there. But he shoots notes, and at the same time, they're going very, very fast, and it almost seems like it'd be uncontrollable, but he still manages to have it swing and sound just great. I keep saying great. I don't know, amazing. I mean, there's just not enough adjectives for me to describe. There's just flurries of notes and sound. And uh, um, in the last song, I, I just, um, I, you know, I, you can get lost in all these tracks. You can get lost in the sax. You can get lost in the drums. You can get lost in the piano. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, the, the drums, and, and especially on this album, they just have a lot of balls or backbone. It's just, it's real thick, and, and it's, it's just really uh, lays the foundation for just such a great album. But... I'd say go listen to it. Um, and since it's titled Africa, well, for the camera person, I'll, I'll give a fun fact. And, uh, you know, Africa, um, you, if you're there, if, I've never been, if you're on safari, but I always reminded that there's something about nature that just makes you want to shit. And that's <laughs> Richard Pryor. And um, that makes me think, uh, that's my fun fact, something about nature, it just makes you want to shit. And, uh, and the only other thing I, I have, and I'll let you uh, give your impression of the album, is... Uh, um, a, a question I had for you since we're, we're talking about Africa, the title of this album, and I, I know there's African rhythms and stuff as a reason, but I'll go, I'm just going to go into Africa, is would you rather get a hand job from a hyena or an ant that's related to you by blood? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll have to ponder that one. Oh, man. You I'm going to be, in this, I'm gonna be you in don't have an immediate response. Uh, I notice you pronounce it aunt, so do I. Aunt? You never know why people would say aunt. And maybe that's where you're is supposed that, to. Is that in, the English more well, English? That's a good way to avoid the question. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm um, going to go with you want to get uh, dripped <laughs> off by your blood relative. Because you didn't say anything about a hyena. <laughs> so uh, we're going to get Neil's impression who wants to get jerked off by his aunt. Um, so this is the only, uh, the second jazz album I've ever listened to. The first one, uh, Love Supreme, you got me that on vinyl. So I experienced that on my stereo, which is kick ass yeah. several times. Unfortunately, I, when I listened to this, it was just on my phone, on headphones. Yeah. So I think um, some of those, um, the, some of the power of it, I probably... I, oh, yeah, I like the low ends and the, the ass, yeah. so the, the drums really... So I can't, I'm going to probably borrow this one and then give yeah. it another shot. I would. Um, I listened to it uh, stoned and not stoned, and uh, both were awesome. Um I kind of fell asleep to it a little bit when I, I think that was the Indica. <laughs> then it, it just kind of put me in a real relaxing uh, state. So then I... Jazz uh, and Indica. Then I got up, up caffeinated and, and experienced it again this morning, and it was really cool. So probably listened to more of uh, his stuff. And I, I don't know why I never got into jazz. The only thing I remember <clears throat> when I was a little kid, we'd uh, watch uh, The Cosby Show. Oh, in the okay. 80s, yeah. and uh, and he'd always talk about jazz, and they'd play jazz and have Bill jazz. Cosby's a nice uh, point of conversation <laughs> yeah, right. in this day and time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that was the first time, because my parents, they listened to more like 50s and 60s, like Motown yeah. and, uh, you my know, rock and roll, so I didn't get exposed to jazz. And My grandfather listened to jazz, you know, and I got into Love Supreme, and I, I asked my dad, and I was like, is this like something grab on? Well, listen to he said, oh, fuck no. <laughs> he said, it's totally different. He was more into easy listening and, and radio stuff. Well, I mean, okay, so Indica, if you would recommend Indica and, uh, and jazz, maybe you could do uh, um, Crystal Meth and Slipknot. <laughs> See how that treats you. That sounds like a nightmare, doesn't it? 
Yeah, I saw a Slipknot uh, bumper sticker on my way over here today. I don't, you know, I think there's a song by them I like. I, I shouldn't give too much shit. I was just thinking of a heavy band and math. Yeah, right. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's all. Uh, come to try you and uh, post your favorite albums, post your favorite movies, post your favorite books. We don't want to hear what you had for dinner or who you voted for. And we will see you next time. Bye.